Okay. I told you that. Oh. This. This is my yeah. dad landing from the boat, and this is my dad right here. Anyway. Yeah. This here's a story right here. You see that picture? Okay. Okay. Now, my dad, he was infatuated with America. See what it. Okay. It says shave and hair, haircuts. Okay. 25 cents. That was his barber shop. Really? And it's in a picture? Well, let me tell you. Uh, this was on the Delshaven where he had his barber shop. He lived in a house over here somewhere. You know, right close by. But, my stepmother, she got that picture from your great-grandmother when she came and brought us over from the United States. Okay? Who knew nothing about this? Oh, a my God. Of theirs was just one of the street artists that had sit there and pencil sketch this. This huh. is all pencil sketch. Huh. Okay. When she opened up that picture, she looked up. That was there, of course. And he <laughs> said, my God, that's my barber shop. <laughs> oh, my you God. Know? That gives me chills. <laughs> well, it's very unique. <laughs> but anyway. Just a coincidence that that picture even came here. Well, actually, yes. But here... Here is the same picture. The bridge that you see over here okay. is looking at it from the other side on that. I see, yeah. This is from the other side. You follow me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyway, this is a uh, business license. And here's my grandfather in his music store. Right there, that's my grandpa. He had a music store. He had two of them. Oh, this is your mom's dad. Yeah. Right. Two music stores. Yeah, he had oh. two of them. This is one of them. Guitar, the old style gramophones with the big speakers. This was in the 1900s, early 1900s. Mm -hmm. That played records? Yeah. This is his death certificate. He was. 75 years old when he died in 1954. Your grandpa. Yeah, and this is my grandmother. Did you ever meet him? Her. Oh, yeah, I know him. Yeah. I know him, of course. But anyway, that's the death certificates. There are copies of them. We can go into more detail about that later. But anyway, did that's you want a picture? Yes, of I do, actually. I thought you may. Yep. Especially since you have two of them. Any, well, yeah. Oh, I probably got more. So who else? This yeah. is huh? This is this is that, you. That is Hans. Oh, this is Hans. Yeah, and that's my aunt Nell. Aunt Nell. She was the youngest member of the fam of the Hunter Ford family. She was my mother's youngest sister. Jennifer got to meet her. Huh? Jennifer got to meet her. Yeah. Well, so did you. Who's this? Did you don't remember? That's Brenda. That's her brother's daughter okay by his first marriage that was the only child he had and you guys were all on the ship Brenda. together no not Brenda or no. Nell they were the ones that picked, picked us, us up. up okay right so this is how you came to America in that boat the wow. New Amsterdam crazy okay now here's a synopsis of an article that was written in 1950 and this came out in 1975 25 years ago Cornelius Lear Modesto was reunited with his sons Henry and Hans after 10 years of separation caused by the war. Lear fled Holland in 1940 to escape capture by the Nazis. He hadn't seen his son since. Okay, now these are my grandparents and great-grandparents on my mother's side. These were Oma and Opa. Okay, that's your mom and dad. No. No, oh, your adopted parents. No, those were my grandparents on my mother's or oh, my, okay. my mother's parents Your they mother's were my parents. grandparents okay grandpa and grandma he's the one that had the music shop yeah <clears throat> and then who had the barber shop your dad my dad yeah okay now they started their family so here's a picture with the two oldest kids that were born and that was Tantamine and joe the girl and the boy hmm. about a year and a half apart the family expanded, okay? 
And it expanded some more. <laughs> it certainly did. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, he had 12 yeah. kids. Whose family again? My mother's, Your mother's side of the family. All these are on my mother's side oh of the family. Oh, my God. Those are all my relatives. Those are all your relatives. <laughs> Where are they now? Well, Look at Are they wearing wigs? Yeah, this was some sort of a party. I have no idea. And um, Uncle Heat, as I asked him, he said, Oh, it was a get-together. Probably for here on Theo's 25th anniversary as a priest. Hmm. See, now Tante Do, she was a nun. And, uh, oh, I don't see here on Theo, but I'm sure he's in here someplace. There's Gidus. He was a friar, or a monk. And then, uh, here on Theo, I probably got a picture in here of him doing church services. Okay. Now, this is my oldest cousin, Cocky. And she was Mean's oldest daughter, right there, right there. Now, when I went back to Holland three years ago, Therese met, met me and Ben, Therese and Ben, and I got a letter from Francis. Oh. There's twins, yeah, Francis wow. and Will. Cool. Twins in okay. your family, too. Yeah, mm. Francis and Will. Now, Francis, you know Francis wrote me, wrote me a, a letter, and I'm in the process of trying to answer her, write a letter back in Dutch to her. I'm trying. Who's this? That is the one that died. That was John. Okay. How He's, did he die? I don't know. I don't know, but he was pretty young. Now, Ben, he's a, I think that's Ben. More than likely their names on the back. Young. Right here, that's the one. That's Jean, right there. Okay. He was a millionaire. Oh, he really? died, yeah. Hmm. And he became a millionaire in the moving business. Mm. He was in the moving business, and he set up his own, own moving business. There were a lot of people that were uh, migrating from Holland to South Africa, for instance. And he was instrumental in, you know, giving them the equipment or helping them move to do it. Now, here's my mother on a trip, on a bicycle trip with her friends. And that is that is your grandma. That's my grandma. This one. <laughs> That's your mom. Mm hmm She looks happy. Oh, well, she was young. And this was before the war. I think these pictures were taken nineteen thirty six, nineteen thirty seven, something like that. That is Anne now. And these of course are the same girls. Do you see the bicycles back there? They took a bicycle trip all over the western part of Holland. Okay. And some more of my wife's, my mother's family. If I look at them closely, I can tell you what the names are of most of them. And they always smoked. They're always smoking. Every last one of them. But anyway, there's Doe and her regalia, and they right behind her, mean. Wait, where, and where's Pokey, the oldest now? one, right there. She was my favorite, and of course, there's the one that I know quite well. That's Uncle Chef. Is he playing piano? Huh? Playing piano. Playing piano. And the nun. Well, like Who was the nun again? Doe, Tante Doe. She okay. had Alzheimer's. <clears throat> When I was in Holland, she's probably dead now. She was 94 mm. years old. Yeah. Mm. With Alzheimer's, so I don't imagine that she lasted. Did you see her? No. Hmm. And anyway, there is Gidus and Joe, his oldest brother, Bob. <coughs> and like I said, there was a piano in the house. And every one of these people, believe it or not, every last one of them, Know how to play the piano. Really? And and mandolins. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Now, Om Hank, where is he? Anyway. Well, anyway, he took over the music store. I'll have a picture of him somewhere. Those are all the girls in the family. That's what you see, all the girls. Like your mom's sisters? Yeah. 
That's cool. Okay, now here's old Hank. He was he was the one that took over the music stores. Yeah, here's Fetus playing the mandolin right there. So most of these pictures would have been taken when, like in the 30s, 40s? No, these pictures were taken in the 70s and 80s. 70s and 80s, okay. Yeah. Chef, mm -hmm. Joe, Fetus, and Hank. Four boys. And they were incessant smokers, all of them. Was his name really boys. Henry? Yeah, well, Henny. Yeah. Henny, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, this little boy, well, little boy, that is um, Hank's son, the only one that he had. He was married to Aunt Magda. What the heck was his name, Bob? I think it was. Eddie, that was his name. Here's your cousin Eddie playing the piano. He plays the organ also. Like I said, they all played musical instruments, but that was Eddie. Okay. Is that Aunt Nell milking a cow? Yeah. It's <laughs> a funny photo. All these pictures he just sent me out of New York before he died. Okay. When and when was that? Ah, uh, when did he die? Nineteen late eighties. He was seventy six years old. Now can you imagine these capes? This was taken in nineteen forty seven. In Holland in front of the house where we were living, apartments. My parents sent Hans and I to school with these things on to protect us from the rain. On a bicycle. With your trombone. On the handlebars of the bicycle. <laughs> and both of you think, had to be on a bike. Yep. <laughs> in and those if you cave. don't think that we felt stupid <laughs> because all the kids were laughing at this, oh, here comes those weird Dutchmen, you know. Yeah, you know, this is in New York? Modesto. Oh, Modesto. Modesto High School. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> Sorry, Dad. <laughs> well, <laughs> but you know, the pointed the pointed hoods, and then the cape, all made out of peacoat material, heavy stuff. Is this who you're named after? That's mom. That's your mom? Mm-hmm. And see what mm. it is, this was on the third story. They owned a big house. You know, one of these houses, like you saw in the earlier pictures, that were just, you know, they're built neck to neck. I went by there the last time I was in of them. I walked there. That house is gone and it's been replaced by big apartments. Mm. That kind of tore me up too. Yeah. You know. So you have your mom's middle name. Oh, Marie. Your Maria. Marie. Yeah. Both of these are mom. Mm. Okay. And there's my dad and my mother and her mother. Your grand great grandmother. Oh, how back about then. that? Huh? How about that? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Anyway. I don't know what all that's about. My mother's death certificate. Oh. How old was she? Thirty-two. Oh, yeah, that's right. You told me that before. She died yeah. of a broken heart. Yeah, according to the family, and they just wanted to put dead in a bad light. But after thinking about it, you know, my mother had two kids to take care of. Her father disowned her, you know, for all intents and purposes. He didn't really disown her, and he allowed the family to communicate with her. But he wasn't. He didn't. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, she had quit it. She committed the ultimate sin in his eyes, you know, against the church. I told you what that was. She got pregnant. Yeah. With you? 
Well, even before that. Oh, yeah, she lost the baby, huh? Yeah. Anyway, there's mom's picture again. That's your mom? Mm-hmm. We all have that kind of full face, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The full and this face is her now. here as a kid? And there's a picture of her, too. Where is it at? Right here. Very cool. That's cool that you have all these photos of her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is she with you here? Hmm? Well, let me see what that is. Yeah. Cocky. No, yeah. Cocky stains. What's that mean? Well, Cocky stains is my oldest cousin. Oh, uh, that's your mom with yeah, your cousin. Yeah, she's about 10 years older than I am, so if she's still alive, she would be uh, around 80 years old. That's not your mom. That's my mother, and that's her youngest sister, Nell. And see, that picture was taken in 1923, 1924, somewhere around in there. Mm -hmm. Is that the music store? No. That's a ch that is the school. Oh, the school. That is one class. Oh, oh, that there. I was thinking of this here. Oh. No. There's feet is on those bone feet. Does that mean bike? Well, it's got a motor on it. Oh, okay. <laughs> and that's where the word blown comes from. It means a oh, rumbling machine. Okay, here's his music store. Okay, add for and his... this, right. That's so cool. And he promoted his store pretty well. You know, there's oh. one of them. West of Hachenstadt, that's where he was. Uh, here's Hank playing guitar, or actually tuning up a guitar, and in his music store, standing in the doorway of the music store. See, Hantevoorts. Yeah. Music. Yeah. Music. Uh, well, handling that means trafficking, or you know, he was in the trading or music trade. You know, it's kind of. And there's his wedding picture in 1948. And Hank is, is, Hank is your dad or your... No, that your, is my uncle, your uncle on my mother's yeah. side. He was your my mother's, mother's brother. brother. Okay. Right. Right. And he married Martha. I like Martha. Are you named David. after him, kind of? I don't think so. I, they always call him Hank rather than Henry or Henny. Yeah. It would have been Henny. Like my name is actually Henny. Yeah. But when I came to the United States, I had heard in Holland that Henry in the United States is actually Henry. Mm. And I like the sound of Henry. Henry. Oh, I so still can't say it, but, it, <laughs> you know. Well, Uncle that Stuart was, calls that you Henny. Whole, yeah, I know. All the time. My brothers do, period. Yeah. All of them do. This is a letter from yeah, Hades do, explaining they? what it was. Huh? huh? They do, don't they? Yeah, they do. Now... This I'm is call a you picture when we, when, we left, when we left Holland. Who's okay, this? We had that, that was my foster mother. And you? And right Uncle there, and Hans? Then Hans. Yeah. This is my dad. And yeah. this is Uncle Hans. Yeah. And that's Omar. Well, no, that's Tante Hans. Right. She was my foster parent. Uh, well, when did Omar come into the picture? It's Omar. The Oma, died, my mother? The one that died of Alzheimer's here in Grandma's trailer. That was your mother's mother. No. That um, was before Grandma. that. The one we used to go oh, visit. Oh, 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 okay. Well, that was my stepmother. Okay, now that little boy that you saw playing the piano in the end of that book? Yeah. That's him over here. As a baby. Eddie. Eddie, okay. Yeah, he was a year old, and it was my duty out there to take him potty. Oh, really? Yeah, because Tante Annie couldn't put up with the smell. Is that you? That's me. That's my dad. Mm-hmm. That is Uncle Bill, smoking a cigar. You kind of look like your mom. Yeah, I know. I got a lot of characteristics of the Hantevoorts in me. 
You wouldn't believe how small that living room is, about half the size of your living room in the apartment. Hmm. You know? Very small. I couldn't believe it when I saw it again, because when I was a kid, I had the feeling that it was much bigger. Now, I think that is my grandfather on my father's side, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Now, this was my favorite uncle. Same thing here. That's Uncle Carl. That was my dad's half brother. And I liked him. And that's his marriage picture. <coughs> and there he is, him and his wife, Carl and Wilma, and then their son, Henny. Hmm. So he's my cousin, or okay. half cousin, or whatever you want to call him. Anyway, I did want to look him up. I liked Carl because he's kind of fun loving. Irresponsible, but fun-loving. <laughs> yeah. I All can right. tell you. Here it is. Okay, <clears throat> here's my dad. In his... Uh, barber shop. That's your dad. American? American barber shop. Hmm. American. Hmm. Okay. And he was a heron, or a man barber okay you only cut man's hair hmm who's that up there okay that's my dad and my mother and Koki Staines was the uh, Tom Pines maybe I think that's Mishin over there wait this is your, they got remarried no they got married then hmm. in December of 1936 Okay. That's their marriage certificate? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I was legal, really. Thirty December nineteen thirty six. I was born in nineteen thirty eight. Fifteen months oh, later. Yeah. Fifteen months later. Hmm. So there's that in his military uniform. As a Dutch Marine. And I had a hand painting of this picture. A friend of Dad painted me in, in original oil. I don't know Dutch what you happened. as a baby. Yeah. You look determined. <laughs> <laughs> Is that you too? Yeah, all of these. Oh, they are? Mm -hmm. These are my dad's baby photos. Mm-hmm. Is that with you up there, the lady Where? with the glasses? My mother. Really? She looks different now. Mm-hmm. Well, I think she went through very trying times. Because the war had, had set in. There was nobody interested in her. You that's know, you here, too? Yeah. That's my dad. The camera's reflecting. Don't mess with me. <laughs> You're tough, Dad. That was when Hansi came along. And this is the last picture that was taken together as the family. This, this was in 1939. Oh, this one right here? Right there. That's the yeah. last picture of the family? And the, the gazebo still stands out when I looked really? it up. Really? Did yeah. you? So that's your mom, your dad, you, and Uncle and Hans, Hans in your mom's arms. Mm-hmm. That's well, cool. Hans is in mom's arms. I'm. Yeah. Okay, dad is home with me. That's the last photo of you guys. Mm hmm. Yeah, I was less than two years old. I was about a year and a half here. Wow. This picture was taken, uh, oh, probably in early 1940. And that was, like I said, the last family picture that we were together. He was in the Navy, as you can tell. And. You know, well, he got called up. He went in the Navy. Okay. Now, I have no idea who those two people are. There's a picture of us. And here's a picture. Of your mom? Mm hmm In her tombstone? Mm-hmm. Just send me that picture, a family plot. 
here telling you she was born in Rotterdam on 12 September 1912 and she died 8 July 1944 not even 32 years old no, not even. that's sad I inherited her nose. But anyway, I was going to go by and look at the gravestone. My grandmother, my grandfather, and my mother are all bo buried in the same. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, over there it says, you know, that she was. Uh, that her husband, Cornelius Lear, see it? Yeah. Her husband's name, my dad's name. Mm. But there's one, two, three, four. And they're all buried there? Mm -hmm. But how come you didn't go see it? Because it's no longer there. Oh, it's not? How come? I don't know what happened to it. I asked Truce about it. And she said, well, they had to make room. There wasn't enough room, oh. so. This so is do right. they bury people on top of people? Well, yeah, they do that here, too. Jeez. Mm hmm But that is Nell, Bob and Hans, Oom Carl, and then myself, taken in front of the house we were living. We were living on the third floor, or on the se second, well, it was the third floor, actually, in this, the house that will be standing over here. Okay. And that is, that is still there, because... Stuart and I, we went and looked it up. We were there. Now I went to, to a Catholic school, and this was my class. Where's you? Yeah. <laughs> the friar that was teaching us right there. Which one again? Right there. Okay, third row, second one in. Right there. Okay, this one right here. Yeah. Hi, Dad. You can always tell it because Tante Ani, even on the day that we left, I was damn near 12 years old, still had to comb my hair. And then she put that stupid looking curl in there by folding her hand and squashing it together like that. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. She called it the slough of Waterloo. <coughs> what does that mean? This is our communion picture. That's Hans, that's me. And we went to the Blydorp Zoo almost every, almost every Sunday in the last year that we were living in Holland. This is the zoo you went back to visit? Yeah, we went back to that zoo. But see, they had the parrot sitting outside like this, and that was all over. You, well, all these poles that you see, you don't yeah. see the parrot, but anyway, that's where the parrots were. And they had peacocks walking around in fancy pheasants and all that sort of thing. Mm. They were walking out through the gardens. And the gardens were beautiful, mm. much more so than what they are now. Oh, really? Yeah, mm. much more so. And I was really disappointed when I saw the zoo and in, in the disarray that it is. You know, that building is no longer there. Mm. This is to the entrance. The entrance is right here. And there's... The, that that is not there anymore. Anyway, that was kind Are of Are those sad. pictures of you on the other side there? This one is me. That is Hans. Okay. That's our communion pictures. Oh, we were raised really? Catholics. That's remember? my dad's communion picture. Yeah. And that's Uncle Hans's. Mm hmm Anyway, this was taken the Sunday before we took off on April the sixteenth when these pictures were taken. Do you remember okay. these photos being taken? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And your hair's up in that little curl again? Well, look at it. Was that a Dutch thing? Um, no, that was her thing. <laughs> okay. These are pictures to remember us by, and there's Eddie. And like I said, I took care of Eddie, you know. Um... That's my dad in the middle. Because Ani didn't like to clean up the mess that he'd create whenever he went to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. So that's why I... He had that to was, clean it up. That was my job, <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, so much for that.
You want to put that in there? Well, it's the only one I got at the moment, so... Okay, did you see these? Whoa! Oh, shit. Okay. Hey, you know what I remember from these kind of photo albums is your boxer dog that you had when you met Mom. That's the one thing I that stands out in my memory from these flowered photo albums. Remember seeing oh, pictures no, no, of no, your no, boxer no. dog? Yeah, okay, I'll show you the boxer. That was Connie. That actually became Stuart the dog. Well, there's mom and dad. That's your mom and dad? Yep. They're at the Playboy Club in San Francisco. How do they get color photos? Well, I mean... It's older now. Yeah. Well, this was taken in the late 60s. Oh, well, not, 19, not 1970. Marie. See, at the Playboy Club. Not your biological mom. No, no. That's my stepmother. Yeah. What's her name? Ina. Ina. Okay. Uh -huh. Is that Oma? No, well, you would call her Oma here. Oh, yeah. her real name's Ina. Uh -huh. Really? How yeah, does she spell that? Well, actually, it was Glacina, but we shortened it to Ina. I-N-A. I-N-A. And that is Don and Larry. Don and Larry. Really? Larry is leading a very troubled life. Is he? Don. Don has three kids. Classina, C L A double S I N A one S. C L A S I N A. Who's that? Your sister. What dog is that? That's the German Shepherd that Oma and Opa oh, yeah, see. Okay. There he is. I had to take him to the vet. What's up with Larry? Because. Um, Oh, hell, he got addicted to alcohol and drugs and all that sort of thing, and I really fucked him up good. And it's still that way for him, huh? He's still, well, he hasn't recovered from it. Oh, he's this been is, battling that for a long time. Yep. This is a group picture that was taken in Calaveras County, the Big Trees National Park. And that's a family portrait. That is me, Corey, Hans, Mom, and Stuart. It's that could be Stuart and that is Corey. I can't tell without my without my magnifying glass. That is Stuart. Playing Monopoly. That's is that Stuart. you? No, that's Stuart. Oh, okay. It didn't look like you. No, that's Stuart. He was cheating. He was always he? <laughs> he always won a monopoly and that was the house where we were cheated? living. He probably Oh, money I away. don't we didn't care. Oh yeah, he was always snuggling money. <laughs> we let him get away with it because he was the youngest brother. You know, we didn't face that much hell with him. Of course, when he wanted, well, yeah, but you cheat. And of course, he denied it. But that is mom, and this was the house, you know, when we came to the United States, that's the house we were living in. That was your house? That was our house. Jeez, let me see that again. Yeah, I got more pictures of that. See, here's the same thing. Where's the house located? And then out on Panama Avenue, it's all apartments now. Hmm. But that's the same house, believe it or not. Why did you come to but Modesto? Because Dad was here. Why did he come here? To get away from Holland. Yeah. That was. That but was why what, Modesto? About, it's so far away from New York. That was about the second or third. I think it was the second car that I owned, 53 Impala. Cool. What if you still had it? <laughs> well, uh, I tell you what, it was Bel Air. Okay, you can tell here by the arrow strip. Four door, four door hardtop. There is no brace in here to hold the windows. That was a novelty. Okay, huh. and they were very popular. That car would be worth probably in the neighborhood of fifty thousand dollars right now, if I still had it. Had a little cool. six engine. Six cylinder engine in it. What happened to it? Uh, I don't know what the heck happened to that car. I think I may have traded it in, maybe I wrecked it, I don't remember. Well, here's a family portrait. We were in the Modesto High School band, Hans and I. Hans was a much better musician than I. What did you play? Trombone. Trum oh, trombone. Huh. Yeah. Here's, here's Hans and Brenda. 
the little girl that you saw, you wondered who it was when we came off the boat. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, they had an affair going, those oh, did two. They? Yeah. So, I don't understand, if you get off the boat in New York, what brings you all the way to Modesto? Mom and Dad. Yeah, but were they, they all... living in Modesto. They already were here. What? It seems yeah, so that's far a long away story. from New York. Well, yeah, but Dad served in the Pacific, fighting the Japanese. Is that Jennifer? Mm-hmm. And Ryan? Mm-hmm. Yep. Kind of a modern picture. Yep, it sure is. Now, that's my dad right here, and his half-brother, Uncle Charles. He weighed probably around 300 pounds or more. He was fat. Doesn't look so and, fat in that picture. And my dad, my dad didn't like him. Because mm, he was fat? No, because it was a half-brother and all that sort his of thing. His Uncle Stuart. Yeah, I think so. And his best buddy hanging out. There's Mom picking up orange, picking oranges in the ba in her own backyard. Yeah, yeah right. Close that is Joanne, a good friend of uh, Mom and Dad, and Joanne, uh, John, the best friend that they had. His name was John, and guess what his wife's name was? What? Marta. <laughs> I would have never guessed that. <laughs> no. <laughs> but really, I thought that was a hell of a coincidence. Why? Well, I mean, here you got a mock there in Holland, the only mock that I ever knew, and then lo and behold, you know, 20 some odd years later when I came to the United States, you know, Dad's best friend was married to a mock there. But anyway, we were still playing Monopoly, you know, this was all on the day, it was Thanksgiving Day, on my first year, I think, working for Standard Oil. And I came home and I played, I played Monopoly with, with my brothers, of course, and Who's the little jo girl? Joni. Her name's Johnny? Joan. Joan. Yeah, Joni. Yeah, she was cute, just just like Rayanne, you know, about the same age, about the same type of personality. There we go. There's Mom and Dad. And if I'm not mistaken, okay, there's, I think that's Aunt Judy right here, and her mother, and that is Corey, that's right, that's Don and Larry, Don and Larry. Because mom and dad, they went to Philadelphia to visit Judy and Corey, and that is Judy's mother. Okay. And Judy. Uh-huh. You know who I'm talking about. Yeah. Yep. Okay, well, there's another picture, the same one as that, that's Corey. This was our wallpaper. <laughs> Hans Lear. Henny and Hans. And that's mom and dad, my stepmother, if you will. And that's their dog. And you had to take the dog to the vet to get put to sleep? Well, yeah, he was way too old and he's in sad shape, couldn't take care. Is that Boozer? So, no. Because that's me over there. Oh, I don't yeah. even remember who's. I don't even remember those two dogs. Hmm. Okay. No, well, that's. Oh, that could have been Corey. Mom's oldest son. And these two dogs that could have been in San Francisco. So you called Ina mom. Oh yeah, of course. She was a good mother to mm -hmm. us. And she's Corey's mom. Uncle yeah. Corey's and, and Stuart. Uncle Stuart's. Yeah. Right. Because in effect, those are half brothers, but we yeah. never, yeah. we never made that distinction. Yeah. No need to. Well, no. And Corey and Mom playing the piano. Corey playing the violin in the house that Dad had built in 1962. Mesmer, his neighbor, hmm. built the house. Huh? Oh, it doesn't matter, babe. You better get going. I like what you're wearing now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that is Connie, the dog he was talking They're about. They're on the table. That's the boxer. Yeah. What was your boxer's name? Connie. Connie. 
Okay. Now, uh, who's that with? I think he. I think he died at home, but I'm not sure. He had cancer. He developed cancer mm -hmm. on his legs. He was only about eight years old. Mm -hmm. It was 1957, and I brought him home, and Stuart immediately took to that dog. Mm -hmm. That was a good dog. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, he behaved I himself well. Huh? I love boxers. Oh, I mean, they're always... Who's in a photo with the boxer? Mom, right there. I don't know who that is. But, you know, you don't see a leash on him or anything else. Mm -hmm. And look at that. He's just posing perfectly mm -hmm. for the picture. That would be Wilma. Yeah, Wilma did the <laughs> same thing. Oh, Wilma was such a good dog. This is on the hill where they lived in San Francisco on Rhode Island Street. Hmm. That's Gordy right there. Little fella. Anyway, all these pictures are messed up. I got to, I got to put old like ones, new on. ones, really old ones. Yeah. Oh, that's Grandpa. Now this, this is your great grand. No, not your great grandmother. Corey's great. Anyway, that is Grandma. She was the one that brought Hans and I over from Holland, and she was 68 years old when she did that. Hmm. And that is my stepmother's mother. She was on the boat with you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Did yeah. she find? Didn't she find you coincident? Oh no, you found the father coincidentally. Hmm. On the boat, he was working on the boat. Oh, that's another story. Yeah. This was the packard that my dad owned. Cool. I went to the hospital and there, and he bought the packard because the seat over here would hold all the way back, so it would make a bed. Hmm. And riding in a car gave me diarrhea. He couldn't ride five miles with, without me having to go to the bathroom. Oh. So he bought that thing, and then they could put a bedpan under me. Jeez. And then just, you know, let me and go. And they would take you to the hospital? Yeah. So what was wrong? Colitis problem. Yeah, always, huh? Yeah. There's Mom's to And that's what you take pills for now? Well, yeah, yeah, part, partly, yeah. Okay, and this was our little house that we had out there on uh, Hauser Lane, which at that time was called Panama Avenue. And this was the room, that tank house here. That was the room where all four of us brothers slept. That was our bedroom. Hmm. Yeah. And a hedge. I planted that hedge. Nice. Yeah. Looks good. Yeah. Okay, that is John, Dad's best friend. This was at the Holland Club. And there's Joni again, his oldest daughter. Is that a KKK dude? What is that? Santa Claus. Oh, oh, oh St. Santa, Nick. Yeah, Santa Claus. Okay. Or Santa Claus in Dutch. And this was Pete. And he was a Dutchman. And at the time, of course, I didn't know it, but he and Bob were living together mm. intimately. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> and the dad didn't make a difference. They were nice guys. Mm -hmm. And he didn't care about the rest of it. Uh -huh. You know, that's their own business. And John felt the same way. You know? But anyway, I don't know who played the part of Saint Santa Claus, but this is our Dutch Santa Claus. Santa Claus. Yeah. Okay, and this is Joni. Awesome. Basically, just go make a left at the first stop sign out here. Yeah. Go right out the driveway on Kansas, make a left. And remember, this is that overpass where yeah. we turn over? And you know how we've gone on 11 to go to Barking Dog? Yeah. Well, just go up a little bit further to the one that we took when we went to the bank, right before mm -hmm. the park on 14th. And then you have to make a left on I because H is one way the wrong direction. Okay. So you go left on I here, make a right on 16th, and it's on the corner of 16th and H. Okay. And my mom says it's a big church. She'll be up in the right-hand side near the organ playing. She's playing trumpet. What okay. is on 16th and H? Uh, Adventist Church. You cannot go down on H. I know, that's why he has to make a that's left a on I. That's a one-way street. Oh, okay. I was going to say, you either have to go I or G Street. Yeah. Anyway, I guess that was Dad's first car after he and my stepmother got married. 
Or else they got married or whatever. I think they just got married there. And this is your dad and yeah. your stepmother? Mm-hmm. Ina? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. She looks different there because she has brown hair. Well, she was also a lot fatter. Oh, really? Oh, well, look at her yeah. hips. Look at her hips. Huh. You know. But that's a long story. I'm not going to get into that now. You kind of did a little bit on the ferry. Okay. Yeah, I may have. Now that is my stepmother's parents, eigenlijk mijn zoma. Okay. My step grandmother, so if you will. Parents. Yeah. These are my oh not really my great grandparents. They're not really. No, related not really. To me. No yeah. no, you and you and them have no blood relations yeah. there at all. Yeah. But they're still part of my family. Yeah. My Bye, step, sweetie. My stepmother raised me, you know, from yeah. the time I was twelve till the time I left home. And I did essentially the same thing you did when, uh, when, when you graduated, you know, and I did essentially the same thing. You moved to the Bay Area. Not quite as independently as you did. <laughs> well, I had a job lined up. Standard Oil. Yeah. Okay, now, my dad played in the Modesto Symphony when really? it was in its infancy. Wow. You ever remember seeing pictures of this guy, like in Modesto High School and stuff? Maybe. That's Frank Mancini. Oh, uh, is it really? Mm -hmm. Remove your thumb. I'll go get him close. And this is Dan. I won his scholarship when I this graduated. This is Dan. That that's your violin. dad. Where? Point to your dad again. Right there. Yeah. Wow. Is he first chair? No. No, he wasn't that. Good. That's Man Frank Mancini. That is that? Frank Mancini. That's so cool. Mm hmm. What year is that? That would probably be. 1956, 1957, Now, is Frank Henry Mancini's like son or brother? Huh? What? Is Frank Mancini Henry Mancini's son or brother? Frank Mancini? Yeah. Wasn't his name Frank? Well, Henry Mancini is the one that wrote, you know, the Pink Pink. Yeah, yeah, well, no, he was, he was no direct relation, Henry uh. Mancini was, no. But I imagine that way back when they crossed paths. Oh, okay. You know the Mancini name. But he, I thought they were related he came, to Henry he Mancini. Came, he he could have been. Oh, I don't okay. know. I you know I really don't I, know I his personal life, all of that personally. But you know he was good friends with the guy with John Philip Sousa. Yeah, yeah. He was good friends with them, and he invited John Philip Sousa to play in Modesto a couple of times, and so John cool. Philip Sousa did. Mm. And, uh, How cool. And Did you know I won the Mancini Scholarship when I graduated I, from Modesto High? Vaguely. Yeah, I do remember something I had a, like that. It was for a person continuing but, a music education. You know, you see the director's ones out there in the organ, out there in the middle. Yeah. That was Frank Mancini, both of them. Really? How did Mom get them? I gave them to her. Dad gave me to her one or the other. Huh. How about that? Mm -hmm. Historical momentum. Now, Stuart, at his house, he's got Mancini's organ, I mean, uh, handheld gramophone player. Wow. Yeah, he gave that to us, and uh, I had it for the longest period of time here. And then Stuart said he would like to have it, and he'd he finished it and all that sort mm -hmm. of thing. So I said, well, sure, you know. So I gave it to him. Mm -hmm. So Stuart has got the gramophone player. And it's an antique, you know, of course. Mm -hmm. But he took, well, he, he's taking good care of That's it. That's so. a pretty cool photo. But anyway, yeah, I thought you may kind of like that. Mm -hmm. Now, my mother, your grandmother, uh, according to her... To her brothers and sisters, from what I've been told, was a concert pianist. Yeah. Now, she was absolutely broke when she was trying to raise us back in 1940, 1941. Uh -huh. A very little demand for concert pianists. <laughs> That's too bad. You know? And Dad, I mean, when he had left uh, Holland, he put Holland out of his mind and he vowed that he'd never come back. Yeah. And he didn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, back in the mid-70s sometime, Mom went back, my stepmother went back oh, to did. Holland. 
Ina. Death refused to go. Yeah, okay. Huh. He was afraid for, for different things. First of all, that Holland would throw him in jail. Yeah. For going a wall. Yeah. And deserting the service. Yeah. Because he was in the Navy. Because he was in the Dutch yeah. Navy. Yeah. And somehow or another, he wriggled out of that. Well, it was wartime. Yeah. People were not keeping close to action. If you were willing to fight the enemy, no questions asked. Yeah. You know, and that's essentially what happened. Now, he was fighting under the Dutch flag, but then the British Navy. The British were counting on everybody to help bail them out, to help fight Germany. Here in the United States, Franklin Delano Roosevelt realized this right off the bat, that if England falls and was captured by the Germans, the world would pretty much go along. Yeah. Germany's way. We would have to. Well, I mean, at that time, Great Britain owned half the world. Yeah. You know, they yeah. owned Canada, they owned New Zealand, they owned Australia. Yeah. All the islands all over the Pacific. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Yeah. So, and they would not be able to defend it because they were now German. So German would inherit all that and they could position their armies and their fleets mm -hmm. all over that mm -hmm. part. Mm -hmm. Make slaves out of the inhabitants, like mm -hmm. Australia for instance. Mm -hmm. I mean, at that time there were only 10 million people living mm -hmm. in Australia. Mm -hmm. Make them German soldiers. 10 million? Huh? Maybe not even 10 million. Well, in the 1940s, yeah, it was somewhere close to 10 million. Mm -hmm. But anyway, be that as it may, the United States, especially Franklin D. Roosevelt, he realized that, and he tried to persuade the American people to help England in their war against the German aggressor, which wasn't working too well. People had just got through with the First World War, and they didn't want another war. Mm -hmm. Then Japan, in their own stupidity, decided to Pearl Harbor. Well, actually, this was a godsend as far as Delano was concerned, because now he had an excuse to go to war. Mm -hmm. Well, hell, if you're going to fight the Japanese, we may as well fight the Germans, because mm -hmm. actually they were a bigger and a more serious threat mm -hmm. than Japan was. Mm -hmm. So when that happened, the American people got 100% behind the president. You realize that Franklin Delano Roosevelt in actuality was a dictator during those years? How so? He didn't even go through Congress. Mm, um, I mean, he set up a war machine. He did that hmm. himself. Hmm. I mean, we're going to make this, we're going to do that. He announced it on the radio, and Congress hmm. didn't have anything to say about it. Hmm. This is what's going to happen. Hmm. And they did. Yeah. But the people were behind him. Yeah, yeah. A hundred percent. No time for paperwork. <laughs> well, that was one thing. <laughs> Secondly, we didn't want to argue about it for yeah. five years because in five years Britain would yeah. have been lost. That's right. Even with all the help yeah. that we sent to Britain, we sent Britain uh, airplanes. Uh, and the thing in the long run, Hitler else. ended up committing suicide. Huh? What a chicken shit. Who? Oh, Hitler. Hitler? Yeah. In the long run, ends up committing suicide. Yeah, out in the bunker. <laughs> Poisoned his brand new bite and shot himself. Yeah. Well, that's what what they, a loser. Well, that's what they all do, if they get a chance. Saddam Hussein was not that yeah. lucky. He dangled on the end of a rope. <laughs> but anyway, that's my car, my Chevy. The one we were looking at earlier. Yeah. That's so cool, your car, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> was it blue? Green. Cream. Dark green. Green, and really. A, and a... And a cream colored stripe oh, over there. Oh, sweet. That was the prettiest color green you'd ever want to see. Really? Was it the British racing green? Chrome. Pretty close. Oh, wow. Except that it was metallic, so it shone. Yeah, yeah. Well, the British a racing little... green is. Maybe someday, no, Dad, if I, I didn't make use enough to, money. Not in, not in those days. Oh, really? Maybe but, um, someday if I make enough money, I'll get a car just like that. I'll find one. Yeah. Maybe you can have find one. You would have to... He do it and all that. Oh, and that's the piano that's now yeah. sitting in our family yeah, room yeah, yeah. right there. That used to be at Uncle Hans and Aunt Carol's. No, it, it never didn't? was. It, it was wasn't? mine then. Uh, they just took it. But it was at their house, right? Yep. Yeah. But now we have it well, again. Hans made the excuse that Mom had given that to him. 
But anyway, my brother says <laughs> hell about that. There they are. That's how I remember Oma. Yeah. You remember her? Yeah, kind you of. You should. You should. I remember when she fell in the bathtub and hit and broke her hip and it all went yeah. down from there. It went pretty much downhill then. But I remember getting cookies and this, stuff every time we went to her house. This was her trailer. This, this was taken in San Francisco. In San Francisco. Right on top of um, oh what the hell is that district called? They lived on Rhode Island Street, 697, I believe, Rhode Island Street. This is Corey, and Stuart was just born. What's in a, in Corey's hand? A balloon. Oh, a balloon, okay. Yeah, on, on, a a, stick. on the end of a stick that he could play with. Mm hmm. Yeah. Anyway, see, there's a, another picture of yeah. us that we came off. There's a picture of. And this is what the house looked like when my parents bought it in 1949. Actually, and these cots I made in the shop in high school. Did you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you get them at Modesto High? Mm-hmm. Of course. <laughs> and your bedroom was on that top part? Right there with my three brothers. Yeah. We had two sets of uh, bunk that, beds, steel bunk beds. That's in Modesto? Yeah. On Panama Avenue. But it's all apartments now? Yeah, all that has been torn down and rebuilt. And I got the original article too, I believe. I got more pictures and documents sitting in a, well, you may want to call it a safe, it really isn't, but anyway. You think you can read that? Mm -hmm. You'd have to blow it up. No, I could read it. Look. Oh, yeah. Cornelius Lyra Modesto was united with mm -hmm. his sons, but you already read it before. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the other thing, too, is when this is on a TV, Dad, it's going to be quite a bit bigger than... <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> that's Brenda, huh? Yep, that's Brenda. <laughs> and... That's all on the Miracle Line flagship, the new Amsterdam. That's what we came over on. Oh, the canal. That's where we learn how to swim on the edge of the canal. Our trip to uh, Calaveras Big Trees. They were playing our Monopoly. Thanksgiving Day high school graduation picture. That's your high school graduation picture? Yeah. Mom it's has that up. hanging up. Yeah, right yeah. there on the wall. All four of us. You're a handsome man, Dad. Mm hmm No wonder why Mom thought you were fine. Wanted to marry mm. you. You're my dad. Looking good. Anyway. Now, see, this is Ina's mother. Yeah. Okay. okay. Like your grandma? She fell in love with, well, I don't know whether she actually fell in love, but anyway, um, Wardenburg. Was he Dutch? Okay, yeah, he was Dutch. Frisian. Frisian Dutch. But anyway, they married, smoking a cigar, see it? Mm hmm Yeah, he lived to be in his 90s, early 90s, before he finally passed away. Mm -hmm. But anyway, this is Dad's family. This was on Thanksgiving Day, the same day we were playing over here, see, and we were in the same shirt. There was a pink shirt with a little black designs in it. But anyway... Was that you? That's not you. Right, right there. there. That's you? Yeah. Who are you with? Jo Joni. Oh, Joni. Okay. Yeah, right here. The oldest the oldest uh, girl of John, which was Dad's best friend, right here, and his wife, Magda. Okay, now there's Hans. There's Corey. There's you with your dotted shirt. And there is Stuart. Where... Right here. Okay. That's Joni. Stuart. Okay, now, there is John, Dad's best friend, and Mom, too. They used to go camping together back in the 40s out at Camp Meeker. Oh, Martin is right below him right there. That's Martin. Okay, now, this was John's brother right here. He lived in Fresno at the time. His wife, and, oh, this is one of his daughters right there. And that one is probably the oldest, because Joni was the oldest daughter of John and Magda. Okay. And then he had two more 
two more daughters, one there and one there as a baby. He had four daughters in hmm. all. Jeez. Okay, so this is what this was the family that was over for Thanksgiving. I believe it was 1956. Could have been 1957. Either one of those two years, and that was it. Okay, and there are the four pictures. The same. Yeah, well, that mom these has. three, and that one. I took that one later, and actually, I uh, I had that picture taken. And uh, to give to, well, friends like uh, Jean, for instance, you know, and Bach. So I think Kathy has it now, if she hasn't thrown it away by now. Hmm. There, that's the and picture anyway, I remember right here. Right there. Yeah. Okay, and that picture was taken at my dad's house, okay? We had two chicken coops behind the house. There's one and there's one. Okay, now both of those. I built a pig pen. Did you? Because I raised pigs, so I built a pig pen huh. in addition to it that was attached here. I probably got that picture someplace. I, I planted each and every one of those roses, and I planted them from cuttings that I had taken off of roses that I had pruned. Really? I had pruned them, yeah. Look at this ant. And then, huh? Ant. Yeah. And then... Then I planted these roses along wow. here, and I took care of them, and there they go That's into a real Dad. nice head. Certainly did. I of course. Did you know all the plants? Look at how fit my dad is right there. Oh, yeah. Well, I was working out. And that's when you met Mom? Mm, yeah, I met, I, met, I met your mother through Hansi, actually, because Hansi started dating a Aunt pretty... Pretty little girl named Judy, yeah. yeah. And, and Aunt Judy I went, and one more I, I came home to visit. I came home to visit Hans because he had just come home from the Navy. And we were both clowning around in the bathroom. I don't know what we were doing, just cleaning up because we were going to go on a date. I heard the doorbell ring. I went to open it, and there was a blonde, a cute blonde, and your mother out there on the door. Well, we're Judy, you know, we came to see Hans and all that. Well, nice. Sit down, I'll let them know that you're here. So I went to my brother, I said, hey, there are two girls on, at the door. I said, I'll tell you what, I'll take the blonde, you can have the other one. <laughs> oh, she said, nothing, doing the blonde, it's mine. <laughs> and that is her best friend, Jan. Uh -huh. Or Janice at uh -huh. the time. Yeah. So, we went bowling that night. We had a great time. I thought you went to Griseta. You met at Griseta Park, kind of, at the no, concert in the park. That was how we met. That was the first night oh, that I okay. met her. Okay. You met her that night. Now, Hansi had been playing along with Jan and Judy at Griseta Park. Okay. Because they all played musical instruments. Uh -huh. Janet, of course, played her trumpet. Yeah. I forgot now what Judy played, but she played something. Huh. And then Hans, of course, played his baritone yeah, at okay. that time. Hmm. Yeah. And then they came over to the house another day. How well, funny. Well, yeah, this was another day. Yeah. This was a weekend, two or three days later, probably, uh -huh. after they How had funny. the concert. So you got yeah. stuck with Mom. I'll take... <laughs> oh, uh, it was a good day. Though. Yeah, yeah. We had a good time, yeah, really. Yeah, fun. And, you know, at that time, I was bowling pretty good. Yeah. And the first time I rolled the strike, she was all excited, and she came and hugged me and mm -hmm. gave me a kiss and one mm -hmm. day another. I, and I said, oh, I like this. So I told her, I said, well, do that every time I roll the strike. She said, okay. <laughs> well, I started rolling strikes. She liked it. Pretty damn good incentive yeah, there, Yeah, you know? that's cool, Dad. Oh, well, yeah, so she was sitting in my lap all the time. You know? She was sitting in my lap more often than I. I'd love to see that now. Oh, Let's reenact it. I was... I would like to. I don't think your mother does, but I would like to. How funny. Oh, yeah. I get weird dreams. And sometimes they're weird and so damn funny. I wake up laughing my ass off. And it actually wakes me up. I'm laughing so dark on heart. I wake myself up. I told Gary this. And do you know Joey's uncle, Dan? Okay, yeah. He weighs about 350 and pounds. He's about six foot tall, and he weighs about 350 pounds. He's big. Is this Dan and Toad? 
Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Well, anyway, and then Gary, who's not... Well, Gary, at that time, when I first met Gary, he weighed around 235 pounds, and he's a little taller, maybe an inch taller than I am. Not much. But he weighed around 230, 235. And then, of course, there's me, and I'm not a lightweight eater. You know? Anyway, I've been working with Gary. That's how I learned how to cook asparagus. I added a few things since then, because he just used... Uh, uh, kosher salt and pepper and then I added the garlic things to it and the, well, and the uh, he used olive oil but anyway be that as it may that's how I learned because I helped him cook things at, at the Lady of Fatima church anyway we were d we'd done this benefit for the Lady of Fatima church and we were going to provide the entertainment well we decided that we were going to do the nutcracker in tutus oh god all you guys <laughs> Can you imagine 350 pound monster wearing a tutu? That would be that, fun. That in itself is fun. Yeah. But anyway, we were dancing out there and somebody thought that they had a little action to our dance routine and threw ice cubes on the floor. Oh God. So we were slipping, well this is, and I was dreaming this. Yes, yes, you told me this, okay. I was dreaming this. Uh -huh. Anyway, so we were slipping around on the ice and one thing or another and I fell down and I'm looking up, and there's Gary dancing away, and he's not wearing any underwear. <laughs> All of his men who was dangling out there in full glory underneath that tutu. That was when I started to laugh, and I was laughing so damn hard I woke myself up. And I remember that dream because, you know, that is one dream I don't want to forget. No. <laughs> I mean, that was funny. That is that, funny. That was funny. And like I said, that's when I woke up. You know, I was laying out there amid the ice cubes out there. And I think I was trying to shove ice cubes up that tutu. But <laughs> oh, my God. Ice, ice cubes up the tutu. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I ever made that. Hmm. But anyway. Yeah, I thought that was funny. Now, okay, I had a similar thing about two weeks ago. We were playing football, and after football, you know, we were tired and draggled out, and we picked up a few cheerleaders, and we went to our room, of course. Okay, and we were making out and doing things and everything else, and one of the guys farted. <laughs> so... One of the cheerleaders said, oh my God, it stinks in here. I'm going to open up the window. Well, she opened up the window, never realizing that the sprinklers were going full blast. Oh, now this was not a choo-choo-choo thing. This was more like a fire hose. <laughs> oh, no. So when she opened up the window, the fire hose hit her full blast and she landed on top of me, which was fine with me. <laughs> You know, but anyway, as a result, you know, I was dreaming that I was going to grab her or one thing or another, and I grabbed your mother. And I tell you what, I kind of half woke her up, and she said, get your arm away from me. You're too heavy, you know. Uh, and she threw she uh, threw my arm off of her, and that's kind of what I woke up. And I thought, well, what the hell am I doing, you know. And then I realized what was going you on. You were dreaming. I was dreaming, <laughs> yeah. But because of that dream, I threw my arm up uh -huh. across her body, which, you know. That's a no-no. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, well, you've had good times, don't you? You're positive yeah. proof of that. <laughs> <laughs> and Jennifer, too. Oh, when she was pregnant with Jennifer, we had Nell visiting us. And this was in August of 1972. I just bought the Volkswagen. So she was just in her first trimester. You know, she she just gotten... And she had morning sickness and all that. And of course, I didn't realize it. You know, most guys don't. Yeah. But anyway, and she was sitting in the back seat because Nell was sitting in the front seat, which that should have been the other way around. Nell would have been better off. But anyway, we started out from Modesto. She wanted to see a hundred thousand different things, and I told her, "Well, California is too big. We can only do a couple of things." Aunt Nell. Aunt yeah. Nell. I said, what is the one thing you really want to see? She said, Las Vegas. I said, okay. okay, we'll go to Las Vegas, and we'll try to take a scenic route. So from here, we went through Yosemite. Yosemite, took yeah. Dioka Pass, went down 395, went up to Bishop. And, you know, this was somewhere around August the 8th, August the 9th, hotter than blazes out on that side of the hill, well over 100 degrees. 
Anyway, we get to Lone Pine, and from Lone Pine we could look at Mount Whitney. So mm -hmm. I pointed that out to her and said, that's the highest point in the continental United States. Mm. Mount Whitney is just, uh, oh, what is it, 14,950 feet, I think, something like that, or close to it. But anyway, I said, this is the highest point in the continental United States. So Let's hike it. <laughs> people do. Yeah, I know. You have hiking trails. I have friends there. that have gone up there. Yeah. But anyway, um, so from, and that was at Alpine, which is on 395, and you're looking at there, and I told her, you know, and this mountain still looked like as it was right at the edge of the village and overlooking the whole valley. It's 25 mm. miles away from that point. Yeah. Huh. Still 25 miles yeah. away. I mean, that, yeah. that's a pretty tall mountain. Yeah. Like Mount Shasta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's a little taller than yeah. Mount Shasta. And it's a much sharper peak. It comes up as yeah, a sharper Yeah, Mount Shasta has a couple of peaks. Yeah, I yeah. know. But anyhow, anyhow, from there we went to Death Valley. Now, Death Valley, to the bottom of Death Valley, that's about 200, some 280 feet below sea level, I believe. That's a hole, is what it amounts okay. to. Of course, you don't realize it because yeah. it's so damn big. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, we went through that valley to go up to Scotty's Castle. And it was hot. And we had this Volkswagen, and there was, of course, no air conditioning in that thing. Mm -hmm. So we had to have the windows open. I made the mistake of laying out my arm out the window, and immediately I jerked back. Mm -hmm. And I burned a hole right here on, on my elbow. Oh, okay, the size of a, well, of a silver dollar. Yeah. Huh. You know, I mean, it was big. It yeah. was probably about that big. Whoa! You know, well, I didn't do that again. <laughs> we got into Las Vegas, and Nell took off her glasses like this, and the plastic <gasps> actually had melted into her forehead. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you're in a Volkswagen in the front seat, you're sitting right up against the window. And the reflect. Against the windshield. Reflects the heat. Okay. When we uh, got absorbed. up to Scotty's Castle, it was 118 degrees. Oh, my God. And they said that the valley floor is between 10 to 15 feet hotter than it is up there on the mountain. Yeah. Because Scottish Castle is sitting on a hill that's 5,000 feet up in the air. Huh. It's sitting on a hill that's 5,000 feet tall. Huh. So they said between 10 and 15 degrees hotter in the valley. So I did a little arithmetic and I said, my God, it was about 130 degrees in the valley. Oh, my God. No wonder I burned my elbow. No yeah. wonder that she burned her ribs yeah. in her. Jeez. You know, and she was complaining when she was driving that her head hurt, you know. And I thought she was talking about a headache. Yeah. Actually, it was her glasses burning We're melting. Her ridge in her, oh in her my eyebrows. God. And she didn't realize it either until she have to left to see. And they were sunglasses, uh -huh. you know, but they were plastic, and the plastic yeah. actually was melted. Oh, into my her. God. Yeah. But anyway. Mom. Well, she was sick. Yeah. You know, she had morning sick sickness, and she was sitting in the back of that car, so she couldn't see where we were doing, so she got car sick on top of that. She was mm -hmm. miserable. Yeah. Poor thing. She really was. So anyway, the first thing that we decided, hell, we want to go in the pool, cool off, and, you know, just lay on the lounge out there and drink martinis or whatever mm -hmm. we were drinking. Uh, it could have been a gin, gin fizz or, anyway, something cool, anyway. Yeah. Anyway, while we were laying out there, here comes Nell. Now, she had taken a shower. She was all dressed up in a dress and a hat on and everything else, you know. Well, let's go shopping. Oh. This is a wow! <laughs> <laughs> have a love of night. I'm not going to go shopping. Why don't you lay down by the pool over here? I don't want to go swimming. I said, well, you don't have to. Put on a swimming suit. She said, no, I don't look good in a swimsuit. <laughs> mm. Well, you can go shopping by yourself now. I'm not yeah. gonna move. Yeah. I'm tired. I'm hot. I just <laughs> want to lay back here and relax. Yeah. So I don't remember really what she did. She didn't go swimming and she didn't put on a bathing suit. I've never seen her in a bathing suit. Mm. <laughs> really. Mm. <laughs> you know? Well, she was only about four foot yeah, and no. weighed damn yeah. near two hundred pounds. <laughs> and you know, when you were small. And when you were growing up, I said, you got feet just like hers. <laughs> you got a high, you got a high in, instep in, in your foot. Have you yeah. ever noticed that? That's high. Well, with all the dancing and everything else you, you've done, you may have done, worn down to a high level. <laughs> but your feet used to come over here like this. There was kind yeah. of a bulge there. Huh. I don't know. Maybe. Well, I don't know. Let's check it. Let's see. 
Well, it's yeah. still it's still a little honey. Yep. Yeah. But it's not not as bad as what it was. Yeah. But when you were small, they really it really looked. Yeah, it's honey. <laughs> yeah, it's, I guess so. Huh. Yeah, it's higher than normal. Hmm. But that was exactly the way her feet was. Because yeah. I've seen her, you know, barefoot a lot. So do you think I was going to end up only. being shaped like Aunt Nell? No, no, no. That <laughs> thought. And if you were, I'd still love you anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but anyhow. No, I think was, I could pack on the weight. I could. Oh, I'm sure you could. I mean, mm -hmm. it's in the family. Yeah. I don't think you'd have any more trouble than what Jennifer no, had. No, I don't think I would on. either. I don't eat it. Luckily, I don't like very many foods. <laughs> well, I like everything, you know. I mean, and I'll eat everything that passes through. And if I've never eaten it before, I'm willing to try it, except for a few things, like bugs. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think I could... I don't even cherish the thought of eating <laughs> mealworms, <laughs> not a lizard. The Snails, idea escargot, people, have you tried that? I've tried it, and I said, I don't like it. Yeah. They taste like dirt to me. Yeah. You know? And Joe, uh, Stuart's son, and Stuart, I mean, they'll order those damn things and pay two and a half dollars a piece for the damn thing. You know, and they got them all buttered up and everything else, and they'll sit out there scarfing these The bugs? Things. Snails. Oh, uh, snails. And uh, I've eaten honey ants. Yeah. Those are not bad. They're sweet because, well, they have honey in their abdomen. Okay. They collect the honey. This is what they bring back to the nest. And, you know, you can eat them as a delicacy, and that's okay. I have eaten the small ants when they were on a cookie or something I wasn't aware of. Uh, and I'd say, oh my God, they're sour. Yeah. Bitter. Yeah, bitter. They're bitter, okay. really yeah. bitter. I've, ha I've eaten ants accidentally before, too. Yeah, accidentally. I think yeah. I swallowed the fly once. But uh, anyway... That's not an ex pleasant experience, mm -hmm. even though it never bothered me and never got sick. I thought I was going to throw up for the next three weeks. But <laughs> I did. I did. Well, just the thought of, yeah. oh my God, you know. I swallowed the fly, and he must have been sitting on a pile of shit out there, yeah. you know. And I'm eating this. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. that's enough to make you gag. <laughs> but anyhow. But then I see people, you know, like on the Fear Factor out there where they have to eat. Oh, yeah. Some of these scaly things, like camel spiders and one thing or another, I said, no. Mm -mm. Keep your two and a half million dollars. I'm yeah. not going to eat that. I feel the same way. I would have to quit the show if it came down to well, having to eat something disgusting. A couple of people have. I've quit. seen them do yeah. it where they just quit and said, yeah. I'm not going to yeah. eat this. One time I saw The Amazing Race, they had octopus all cut up and the tentacles were still moving around mm -hmm. on a plate. Mm -hmm. And they had to eat it. I was like, no, no way. Why would I want to eat raw food, for one thing? Yeah. You know, octopus, I've eaten octopus. And, I don't know, it's kind of like squid. I've eaten squid, and that doesn't bother me. I mean, when it's cooked. You know, some of it tastes pretty darn good. I mean, but calamari, raw and still I'll moving order, on the plate? <laughs> I'll order calamari once, once in a while, you know, when yeah. I go out for a fancy dinner, and yeah. it is on the menu as an appetizer. Hmm. Oh, yeah, calamari is good, you know. A lot of people eat but, it. Uh... When it comes to, like, eating camel spiders, I mean, heck, you look at that ugly doggone thing, <laughs> and you know that if you miss and don't bite off its head first, it's going to bite you in the head. <laughs> That's not a pleasant thought. No, I don't want to do that, you know? What about grubs? Have you seen the aboriginal grubs? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was watching yeah. the Macobi type or whatever the name of the type was. and You hell, can't eat the head. It's what poisonous. They do. No, what they do, well, I, I seen it right after the war. Malaysian people were... Walking through Holland, and they had little tins, and there were live maggots in there. And they grab the thing out by the head, and then eat it right yeah. behind the head. Yeah. They bite it off, and then eat the yeah. body of it, and throw the heads away. Yeah. And I'm looking at it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But anyway, I was watching last week on the TV program, and these Aborigine people, and I don't know whether they're from the Amazon, Borneo, New Guinea, or whatever. I tried to watch the show long enough to see where these people were living. I have a sneaking hunch that they came from the Amazon Valley Basin, mm -hmm. the river basin. But anyway, they were cutting down palm trees, and they were going to have a big get-together, the whole, this village, and the neighboring village. Now, the neighboring village, they were not on friendly terms with the neighboring village. 
but one of the family members had been ousted from, from their tribe for killing another relative. Mm. And this guy, I think his name was Reuben, okay? So Reuben was banned from this family, but he was taken in by the other family a little ways down from the jungle. Okay. These people living in the jungles like that, if they don't have a family, they don't survive. Yeah. yeah. They strongly depend on each other for their very survival. Mm-hmm. By him being banished out of the tribe, <coughs> they didn't have to execute capital punishment per se, but in actuality that's what they did. Mm. Because he was banished and, you know, his chances of survival all by himself would be pretty nil, pretty, pretty small. So anyway, the other tribe gathered him in and they eventually accepted the guy into their tribe and they thought he was a great guy. They were communicating you know, periodically between each other, and they let it be known that he was a great guy. And he was fine. He got along with everybody, and he was no threat or anything else. So anyway, they decided that, hey, you know, rather than living with suspicion of each other, that this type is going to come invade our village at night and chop off our heads, steal our wife and kids, let's have a party, get together, talk things over, you know, and make peace. So they won't have to fear that we're going to come over and mm -hmm. retaliate you know, against them for accepting our wayward son, so to speak, and yeah. we don't have to be afraid of you coming in for revenge sake. Yeah. So they got together and they built this huge uh, house, okay? And the house was probably about 100 feet long because this is where they were going to have to party, inside that house. And uh, Grubs was a delicacy, so they went out and they chopped down a hundred palm trees. Now this was three months before they were going to have this party. Okay. In the three months, the palm trees will lay down on the jungle floor and they'll start to rot. Beetles will come in and lay their eggs. Three months after they cut the palm trees down, the palms are just infested with these grubs, grubs. Yeah. that are eating. Well, they go out there and harvest the grubs. And they ended up going home with baskets this big, full of grubs, you know, life wriggling grubs. And these damn grubs are bigger than my thumb. Yeah. You know, really big, yeah, fat, tasty grubs. Yeah. And, well, there were a couple of white guys that were filming all this. Yeah, okay. And they had to wear the penis sticks, too. Uh -huh. You know, <coughs> they're absolutely bare except for that big old penis stick. <laughs> hey, Dad, I want to get ready for our party today. Well, but... I told you, I didn't really want you to mess around with the camera to begin with. Well. But anyhow. I'm glad I did. Yeah. Anyhow. Oh, because, that, was, you that know... was Janet Boone. She was a sweetheart. These, Dave and Lynette Chapman again over there um well i'll tell you more about them anyway that's in this book is that you dad and that's me look at you yeah look at those swimming trunks yeah look what's in those swimming trunks uh -huh. i know what you're thinking but anyway i took these kids that's joe Felindi. i'll tell you about joe Felindi. trade guy here he no, is i was just again. thinking about how high they are your swimming trunks, they go all the way up to your belly oh, button. Oh, yeah, belly button. Now, I was not holding my stomach in, mind you. <laughs> you know, kind of looks... You're very no. fit. I know, if I lift weights... But anyway, we were living on Bernard Street out in Richmond. And uh, that's Pat and her oldest daughter. She ironed my shirts. I pay her 25 cents a shirt. She was tickled mm. to death. But anyway, she died just like my mother at the ripe old age of 32. Mm. Here I am cleaning abalone that I had. Mm. Yeah, I dove and she you sitting dove out to there. Get those? Yeah. Wow, that's cool, Dan. Skin diving. Well, like I said, I haven't been. You know, by this time, the mother had died. She died that summer, and then about four months, five months later, it was Christmas time. Joe, he worked two jobs mm. and made damn sure that all of those kids had a Christmas. He mm -hmm. bought the Christmas tree, decorated the mm. Christmas tree, he had this. Mm presents laying underneath there for mm. all of his brothers and sisters. Wait, is that your mom again, right there? No. Who's that? That is Joe Valini's mom. Yeah. That's your mom? Yeah. No. We yeah. were living on Bernard. Yeah. Okay, I was living in the basement of this house. Okay, and we were living on kind of a hill. I'll, I'll tell you more about this. Jen, 
I don't think Janice ever met her because I think she died before, mm. you know, Janice started hanging around. How did she die? But she had an operation, a female operation of sorts, blood clot cut mm. loose, got into her lung or in her artery, and her heart stopped. How sad. 32 years old. Well, it was a lot more sad for the family. Right now, before Christmas. Right, yeah, shortly before Christmas. That happened a couple of months before Christmas. But Joe, he got a job at the supermarket as a, uh, well, a stacker or stalker or whatever the heck you call him. Mm, and then okay. he also worked in a restaurant as a bus boy. Mm, okay. And he was going to school because he wasn't even graduated Jeez, yet. He was 17 uh, years working old. Working hard. He was working hard. I taught him how to drive. But like I said, he was just a super guy. I adored him in a way. And these were kind of like your roommates? No, I ran at the house from Pat and her husband. I okay. was her second husband, okay? So they're your and, landlord. And some of those kids, I think the girl over here, I'm not sure, but I think the girl and the other girl were her kids by her first husband, and Joe Felindi was the guy's. Yeah, okay. The guy's son, okay? Anyway, uh,. Joe Fellini, like I said, he was a great guy. He was really a super guy, and I admired him, especially after what had happened. Do you keep in touch and with I him And I saw what anymore? he did. He lives in San Diego. I tried to get in touch with him, but he was never answering the phone. Mm. And he's got his phone listed on the Internet, or his address is Lucky Joe Valindi. Hmm. And that's why I know it was him, because everybody called him Lucky. Lucky. Hmm. But anyway. Maybe you'll get in I'm, touch again. I'm sure he did good. Yeah. But anyway, that was, there he is. With his sisters. And there's Kenny. Okay, now we lived in that part of the house. See, this was the basement. Okay. Your mom and I did. That's where we were uh, living. Okay. They were living upstairs right here. Ah. Huh. Okay. And that is Bill McFarland and Joan. And he, I shared a house with them for about four or five years. Hmm. And there's some of Bill McFarland's pictures. And that is Stuart and Marilyn. And that is Kenny. Stuart taking care of Kenny there. And oh, that was my girlfriend when I was 22 years old. Is that you with her? No, this doesn't look like no. Me. No. <laughs> but anyway, no, she was my girlfriend. What's her name? Peg, Peggy. That's another story. That's another story. And this is Mac. We bought a lot of stamps from him. And uh, we did stamp shows. And this is Wayne Westover. And I think we got some mementos that he made, like my catalog stamp in my room. And Janice um, set up exhibits for him that he exhibited in his name. He, you know. Everybody liked us as a family. We did pretty good. Oh, that's Modesto Symphony. There's my dad, and that's Frank Mancini. 33 years ago. Hmm. But anyway, I got more pictures, but right now I don't have time to sit out there and bullshit about them. But it was fun spending the hour mm -hmm. that I did with you. Don't an hour that. and 28 minutes and 25 seconds, to be exact. Almost an hour and a half. Oh, really? <laughs>